is Philip Matthews, and um, I want to share my testimony with you all. So, this all started in March of 2000 when my parents were expecting their first child, which is me, because I'm the firstborn. Doctors said that um, there was no stomach because they thought the stomach was stuck in my rib cage which is right here. And, um, you know, the moment, they said, the moment I tried to take my first breath, you know, I would die. So, my, the doctor said to my mom and dad that we should watch your border. I guess it took a long decision, but they finally said no. And, um, later on, the doctor said, uh, um, there was a missing portion of my brain, and I would not be able to walk or even talk or communicate with other children or even study. But um, God just did a mighty powerful way through, through that situation. We also found out that um, there were many holes in my heart that uh, they did not even count them. But with all this happening, we went through a large amount of prayer, and um, our whole church supported us. God miraculously healed me, and you know I was born in July of 2000, the 27th day. The doctor said that um, I didn't have that I had a cleft lip, which is an opening in the mouth, and I also had a cleft palate also which is an opening to the roof of the mouth. And they also said that uh, I had a fake eye, which is no eye and no ear, but they all fixed that here in America. And, um, and God has been using me. He, he's been uh, using me to minister all over the world, in India, in Trinidad, and even in America. Um, well, what love of that reason means to me is that, uh, you know, we find children who, who um, need craniofacial surgery and who have craniofacial deformities like me. And um, what we do is we give them free surgery and preach the gospel to them. And, you know, sadly, some children and adults who are left to die out in the street, some are considered cursed and are sometimes made fun of. And I've had that same experience, too. And, um, you know, I've overcome it. And, but yet, there is one hope. And that one hope is God, Jesus. Jesus cared for all children. It says in the Bible too. Then who knows? One of the children, boy or girl, that we do surgeries on, they they might you know, end up being a missionary, and we might not even know it. They'll be out there preaching the, preaching the gospel to every living creature. Just like Mark 6, 15, yeah, 16, 15 says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And that's well, I went to... Um, Fiskin Children's Institute and then Westview Elementary School and now I'm in Macaulay I'm in the Macaulay School for boys only. Hobbies are well I like riding my bike not as much now because I fell. My brother and sister, my bus, I used to ride 
Oh, and, uh, you know, in, in elementary school, my book driver's name is Mr. Wayne. That's my little brother. And I think I don't know what my book Pray for the doctors and pray for the children. All they're out there suffering, and we need to help them. And the second thing I want you to got you guys to do is to donate, donate to Love Without Reason, so we can help all these children and adults who need surgeries. And like I said earlier, that um, who knows, we might be helping a, a child or an adult who might one day become a missionary, so donate. And God will and God will bless you. Thank you for donating to Love Without Reason. May God bless you all. And if you come to Chattanooga, I promise I'll give you a really big hug.